What's up guys? Mike Dean here with Ruben Magana. Pretty much today we're going to do an interview with him and he's going to tell us about his travel experience. What made you start traveling? <clears throat> Just kind of the whole story of how it all progressed to you traveling a month and a half on your own. All right. yeah. well, welcome to the channel y'all. Welcome to First Step Travelers. Um, like I said, my name is Ruben. Been a friend of Mike since the beginning of high school, about a little over half our, half our lifetimes now. Um, the way my traveling excursion started was at first Mike's always been big on traveling for a long time now. I mean he's been out there doing it since a while and he's had his channel he always used to tell me about how traveling is so great you gotta see there's so much more out there and at first like many other people you hear about things out there and you're like yeah whatever and here's the best or sunsets are the best whatever what have you. And I, I thought the same thing, and it took me going through some things and moving to Denver, Colorado there for a little bit. There I saw mountains for the very first time, and they just, they just blew me away. I mean, if you see mountains, you know, they're just, they're just breathtaking. And right then something clicked between that and going out there and hiking and just experiencing so much more than what we have to offer here in our in Kansas City like we really don't have much you can go in the woods that's about that's about it but that just really clicks on and say like, man like Mike's really on to something here like there really is just so much more out there to see in the world so living out there wasn't that long I think I lived out there in Denver for half a year and I moved back and Mike and I got to talking more and uh, you know brought up that I was really open to seeing the world more and experiencing more and we planned out a trip with a friend of ours named Greg and that trip I was supposed to go on as well and they went to Europe and uh, I said I was supposed to be there but I just couldn't get my things together in time so I had to miss out I had to miss out unfortunately so while Mike was out there he went to Naples Italy went up Mount Vesuvius the the volcano that destroyed Pompeii and I'm sure if you've been on the channel for a while you've seen the video gives me a challenge gives me a rock to take back later on down the road a year later exactly a year later i made my trip and that was the destination during about the middle of my trip i was able to take that rock back and i put it back ironically in the exact same spot he, he got it from didn't even realize that at first but just it's crazy to think like put it back in the same spot so that that's how that got started so as for my trip it was it lasted a little over a month i Left September 9th, 2017. Came back mid October. I went to five countries. I went to Ireland. I went to uh, the Netherlands. I just went to Amsterdam. I went to Germany. Went to Italy. And I went to Greece. Spent a good, good amount of time in each one. Definitely spent more time in Ireland and Greece than anywhere else. But it was, it was really something. It was definitely the way. We traveled the way Mike introduced me to traveling definitely has more of an experience versus if you went down to Mexico, down to Mexico and stayed in a resort and just saw the beach, the same same shit you see when you scroll on social media and you know, it's like I went to Mexico, I did this and that, but it's like you're just in a hotel and you're just posting the same pictures of the beach and your drinks everyone else is posting but it, our, our kind of traveling, driving really light and getting out there, really feeling the communities more, really meeting people more. I mean, it's just a completely different taste of traveling versus, versus the, the other way of doing it. And I've always been a quiet person, I've always kept to myself, barely have broken out of my show over the years. That trip really, I mean, it really just opened me up in so many ways. I mean, staying in the hostels, I had to meet new people every day. I, I had to always introduce myself, talk about myself, and I'd be talk, listening to people where they come from, their stories, what they're out there doing. And I mean, I, I learned a lot. I experienced so much. It really, it really opened me up to the person I am now more than more than anything. So it helped me in so many different ways. What preparations? I had my finances in order first and foremost. I had to make money, put money aside, pay bills ahead for when I came back everything would be okay. Figure out what I would need on the trip, clothing wise, supplies wise. Prepared myself mentally. I knew 
firsthand, like I said a second ago, that I would have to meet new people every day and talk a lot. So I was preparing myself for that. Flying on a plane, that's something I did. To me, it's the first time I flew on a plane when I was a little, little kid We went to California, but I was so little, I don't remember. I don't remember any of that. But maybe I was a little bit nervous, not as much as I thought I was gonna be. But when I got on the plane, I mean, it was just like, I felt like I had done it before. Like, it was like, I had been doing it for years. As weird as that sound, I had sat next to this lady. She was from Ireland, she was flying back. She was super nice, super friendly. I told her it was my first time really flying. And she alleviated a lot of that stress, told me it was fine. And we drank, it was an eight and a half hour flight and we drank wine. We drank that free wine like the whole time. I mean, maybe up until the last hour of the trip flying there, we were drinking the wine. So I was pretty, you know, I was feeling pretty good. But the, the flying itself was great, like, and then all the, everything else, all the other flights I had to take between hopping the countries, um, it was nothing. It was just like getting on a bus to go around, so. I mean, if it's your first time ever flying, I mean, just, just get on there. You'll be on there, they'll take off, you'll be like, man, why, why, why the hell was I afraid, you know, this whole time, so. How did you deal with the time change? Um, the time change was rough. At first, like I said, um, flying into Ireland from here in the Midwest, that time change completely flip-flopped. And when I flew out of here, it was, I think it was early afternoon if I remember right. And out there, it was, I think it was close to 6 a.m. when we got in there. And I couldn't check into my hostel until 2 in the afternoon. So... <laughs> So we were drinking the whole flight, so I was pretty messed up. I was just stumbling around Dublin, like, the whole morning. I ate, you know, I think the first two days I just slept hardcore in the hostel, and then I and then I got to hanging out and adventuring. Tell us about your plan that you had. Did you have a plan, or did you just go? I had, I had somewhat of a plan. Definitely the main focus of the trip was to get that rock back above the volcano, and then Ireland... Ireland itself was a big main thing. Like I said, the trip before Mike and our friend Greg went there and I really wanted a taste of that. So I hit Dublin first then when I flew out and hit the other countries, I came back and spent a good amount of time there. So I got to see more the plans out there. I wanted to see Spain, but they had some things going on. Um, some people were saying they were on the break of fighting amongst one another. I don't remember the details exactly, but I just decided not to go. And then I really wasn't that prepared because I don't know Spanish. I mean, not that it really matters because I did go to some other countries where English isn't the main language, but I just decided to wait on that until some other time. Greece was one, so I got to go there. The other places I pretty much winged. I wanted to wing some other ones in there, but I got kind of nervous on my finances towards the end, getting in the last couple weeks, so I went back to Ireland just to see some more and just to be safe so I could make sure like I was there so I wouldn't miss my fly out. All right, let's start with the bad. What was the bad that you experienced on this trip, just to be transparent? The bad of the trip, timing getting it to an airport, not hitting restaurants at a certain time or getting food at times. Just not knowing what time like some places would close so I'd have to maybe skip a meal. Not planning out getting to a couple places. I know there were some places I could have taken a bus or something but I decided to walk. But really, I mean, that wasn't that bad. The experience of that was, was pretty good. It wasn't that much bad really. Though I think the worst part was when I landed in Dublin that first day and I was super drunk off that wine. And I was stumbling around and I couldn't check on my house so that was... That was the worst, that was the worst part. <laughs> that was the worst part, that really was. Um, that was really rough. <laughs> and what would you say was like the good that came out? The good that, the good that came out was, I mean, where, I mean, where do I begin? First, I mean, I, I think about my trip every day. It's been three years now. I think about all of it every single day since then. Just, just seeing new things meeting new people, trying new foods, even some of the foods we have here, just trying them there. I mean, their ingredients and stuff is just, I mean, it's just so damn, it's so damn good. I mean, I had a, I had a Whopper from Burger King, Amsterdam, and it was like, you think it was like from a 10 star restaurant here, like it just blew me away. I mean, just, just, 
just so much was great. I mean, I did. I broke so many barriers, like the flying, rode across the ferry in the Mediterranean to get from mainland Greece to the island to Crete. I mean, there's just there's just so much good. Just, I mean, you get out there and you really do this kind of traveling. Just the the good out there is just. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to add to that. What would you say to someone who has? Well, if you're like if you're like myself at the beginning, and it's something you were thinking about, and maybe you're nervous about taking the leap, worry about your sacrifices, or maybe what could happen to you. Like you're gonna be okay. Just just gotta get out there and do it. I would hope that if you're watching this and you are nervous about it, you can really get out of that. And I mean, you'll be nervous. There'll be times you're out there and you are nervous, regardless. If you're thinking about it, yeah, definitely figure out. You know, think of some places you want to see. Think about what what you want to experience, how you want to go about it, what kind of trip do you want to take for yourself? Do you want to just take a trip like everyone else does? Do you want to sit in a hotel, sit in a resort? You want to just sit on a beach? I mean, beaches are great, but I mean, you want to just like do the norm or do you want to really, you know, would you really want to travel? You really want to like put your feet on the ground and walk through other people's lands and experience their their cultures and everything they have to offer. Hopefully motivation for you is you really haven't gotten to experience much in life or to really see anything outside of your city that you do realize there's there's so much more out there. There's amazing amazing experiences to be had. Like I said, if you're like me and you're on, on the fence about it and you really didn't see anything besides, like I said, your city. I didn't see nothing outside of seeing those mountains in Colorado at first when I moved out there. I mean, something's got to click at some point in time. If it's in you to experience more and do more and you feel that little flame in you, like feed, feed that bad boy. You know, do your research. Get your things in order. Prepare. Just be be brave. Be courageous with it. I mean, you got you got nothing to lose. You're gonna be all right. I believe in anyone out there who wants to strive for something else, experience something else. I mean, I did it. It changed me. It changed. Ev I mean, it changed everything. It changed everything for me. Like I can't. I can't wait to get back out there and do more. I think about it. I think about it every day. Like I said, every day I think about it. So. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. What I haven't said before, you know. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs>